Here's how to use a pulsating massage gun on your shoulder, both effectively and safely. Let's go. The shoulder is actually one of the few areas you can still work on with a massage gun if it's sore and inflamed. But you have to avoid the no-go areas and I'm going to show you where they are. If you work on the right areas, you actually take pressure off the inflamed parts. Now, you can use these massage guns on your own shoulder, but it's usually easier if you've got someone else to help you. You can use the foam ball for all the areas I'm going to show you. The only exception is the outer edge of the shoulder blade where the hollow head is preferred for skinnier people. Never use the massager over the AC joint, the biceps tendon or the shoulder bursa. These areas are very sensitive and prone to inflammation. Just keep away from the top and front of the shoulder and the bony ridge of the shoulder blade. And don't go into the armpit area to access the subscapularis as there's a lot of lymph nodes and major nerves in there. With the foam ball, focus on the following muscles. One, the belly of the infraspinatus. Two, the lateral and posterior deltoid. As long as it doesn't feel tender, because some of the rotator cuff muscles actually attach underneath the delts. 3. The teres muscles. Just remember to use a hollow tip here for skinnier people. 4. The supraspinatus. 5. The pecs, especially pec minor, which if tight can pull your shoulder blade forward on a bad angle for your shoulder joint. 6. The upper traps, rhomboids and lower traps, because they're all important shoulder blade stabilizers. Aim at using the massage gun for 30 seconds on each of the muscles that are described. And the vibration rate, I usually use the maximum for most of these areas, but that's individual preference. Now with the purchasing tips, I recommend a long handle that's particularly important for shoulder areas if you want to do it on yourself and always getting a massage gun that's less than 45 decibels because they can get a bit loud. For those of you with chronic shoulder issues, strengthening and activating your serratus anterior and your lower trapezius should be your priority. Now I have a new video on that, so make sure you check that out because that's really helpful. But that's it for today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, write a little comment, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing because it really helps. Okay, thanks.